The following program contains strong language and content of a sarcastic, tongue-in-cheek nature. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello everyone, I'm looking at TNA's Impact. This is the first Impact after Turning Point, and it seems like the IWC has been gushing over this pay-per-view. There are only a few things on it that I was really looking forward to. I'll download it and have a look and see if it's any good, but... People are putting it at an 8 and 8.5 out of 10. I think that's an overestimation of the pay-per-view's worth. But we'll see. I'm curious to know what these subtitles are about TNA at the very beginning. Last week's was Three's a Crowd and this week's is Burn Baby Burn. You know, it might help to actually tell people what the hell that means. I mean, are you giving your episodes titles now? That seems a little silly to me. So you're opening up Impact with Foley and Abyss in the ring. And as far as I know, there was no mention of this angle on the pay-per-view at all. So it's kind of odd that you're opening up your show with this. They do a pretty good promo. But let me ask a question. Who the fuck is this supposed to get over? You know, what's the point of this feud? I can't see any, and I doubt that TNA Creative have any ideas either. So the first match is Scott Steiner versus Amazing Red. Are you fucking shitting me? And honestly, do we fucking need Don West on commentary? Jesus. Is it me or does Don West M on his shirt look like an upside down W from World Wrestling Entertainment? The match ends when Scott hits Red with that lead pipe that he was carrying. You know, cause Scott wasn't dominating Red enough in the match. Just a stupid way to end a stupid match. After that, out of the blue, Kevin Nash joins Eric Young's Nation of Jobbers, and the only redeeming factor will be if he turns on Eric to get a title shot. After that, we get an eight-man clusterfuck between World Elite, Beer Money, and the Motor City Machine Guns. If I were the Machine Guns, I'd be pissed at Beer Money for interjecting themselves at our title match and wouldn't be teaming up with them. But why should I be surprised? Logic never plays a part in pro wrestling. Hogan says, TNA's on fire, man. Ah, 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 I'm on fire! I'm on fire! They show Hogan at a book signing, and there it looks like there's maybe 20 to 30 people there. You know, I could be wrong, but it doesn't look like turnout was all that good. I love me some Mick Foley promos, but damn, my man has got to get a haircut. It is just woofing. I guess he doesn't have to worry about ever going bald, though. Hamada versus Taylor Wilde. Finally, a match I'm actually looking forward to watching. That was a nice little quick win for Hamada. I really like her Hamada driver. It's a really nice finisher. I love the fact that Daphne says, Have fun storming the castle! That just shows how cool she is. You know the irony with Hogan talking about TNA on TNA? Is that outside of the announcement at MSG... Hogan has done almost no advertising for TNA at all. All of the interviews that he's been on always talked about is his Australian tour and the book that he has coming out. Really no mention of TNA at all. And that kind of worries me. The next match amounts to a two-on-one handicap match between Raven and Stevie versus Abyss. When Abyss seemingly locks Foley into his office. So this is the second match of the night that's had an end by disqualification. Trash talk with ODB. You know, as much as I like her character, she does not fucking need a talk show segment. Good ol' AJ the company man. Everything Hogan's touch has turned to gold. Well, except for his marriage. And one of his kids is in jail. And he has to go on an Australian tour to make some money. But other than that, everything he touches turns to gold. Up next is Sarita versus Alyssa Flash. Another match that I'm kind of looking forward to. The whole Alyssa zipping and unzipping her jacket is stupid though. It's a waste and it takes too long. It takes away from the match. If she wants to do it at the beginning, that's fine. Don't do it during the match. 
The next match is a return match from Turning Point between Hernandez, Matt Morgan, and Pope D'Angelo De Niro versus Rhino and Team 3D, and this time it's a street fight. I had no interest in it at Turning Point, and I really have no interest in watching it here. They pulled the trigger on this feud way too early, and Team 3D joined Rhino way too quickly and easily. The end sees Jesse Neal come out and cost Hernandez, Matt Morgan, and De Niro the win. And I have to say, it doesn't really make sense because doesn't Jesse represent part of the new wave that 3D and Rhino are fighting against? I realize that 3D were teaching him how to be a better wrestler, but again, that doesn't make sense. Why would they side with Rhino when they took Jesse under their wing? It's shoddy and lazy booking, and the writers are relying on the viewers not remembering what happened the week before. You know, I just feel fucking stupid watching them try to explain away Jesse joining their group. You have to be a moron if you're buying into this crap. So Sting no-showed his interview right in front of his house. Did he go on vacation or is he dropping off the videos at the video store? Come on, this is just fucking stupid. Finally, we come to the main event. Daniels and Nigel McGuinness taking on AJ Styles and Kurt Angle. And at this point, I just don't fucking care. I want to get this over with. I mean, come on, you've got nine minutes to do a tag team match. That just doesn't seem like a long enough time to, to have such a high-profile match like this. And Kurt's running the line between face and heel again. This just smacks of Vince Russo booking. You know, it works for someone like Stone Cold Steve Austin being a good guy who does bad things, but it just doesn't work for Angle. Angle is meant to be a heel. Why the fuck are they chanting USA? It doesn't fucking make sense considering that Daniels, I believe, is from the US. It was a pretty good match, I must say, but there's just too many fucking things going on in this show that are stupid, that don't make sense, that have no basis in logic at all. And it just aggravates me because TNA should be at the forefront of wrestling in the U.S. You know, these wrestlers have a lot of talent and they get bogged down in these stupid storylines. It's just so damn aggravating. I'm out of here.